Hello, hello. Today I will be featuring the tier 10 Russian DD, the Khabarovsk. Now, the Kaba has actually received a pretty substantial nerf recently. They reduced the rudder shift on it a lot. Uh, and the reasoning behind this was, of course, to limit its close range power. Now, the natural response I had to this nerf was, of course, to replace the concealment module. Uh, with the rudder shift module uh, because obviously the Kaba needs maneuverability far more than it needs concealment because even with the concealment module you could never really challenge other stealthy DDs uh, you, were you were never a capture point contester the ship always played more like a light cruiser and you needed that maneuverability back so the obvious response to the nerf was removing the concealment module and putting the improved rudder shift one instead this change pretty much reduced the, the rudder shift nerf to pretty much nothing. You barely notice it. Uh, but it did, in turn, uh, reduce your concealment a lot. Or, well, increase your concealment, I guess you would say. Because you're no longer nearly as stealthy. And I actually quite like this change, uh, because the one class that benefits the most, absolutely the most of this change, is DDs. There is no other class that benefits as much because, well, you're still able to burn down uh, battleships just the way you were in the past. You're still able to burn down cruisers. Um, nothing has really changed in that sense. I mean, cruisers are able to ambush you better, meaning they can sneak up closer now because uh, uh, of uh, you, they can catch you unawares easier. But that was always kind of the case. They could because most of the time you're always shooting anyway. And if a cruiser wanted to sneak up on you, you were already shooting, so your concealment didn't really matter that much to begin with. So in that sense, it hasn't changed much. The class that benefits the most was the one, of course, I was shooting at, which is DDs, because you have a harder time getting close without getting spotted. In the past, when you supported DDs like I do here, of course, I'm not trying to contest any of the caps. You shouldn't try to contest caps in the Kaba. You let your Kageros, your Yugumos, the ones that I see you see on my team, I let them do the work. Sadly, all three of them are IGN DDs, which means, of course, I need to help them out with gunpower. But this is actually a pretty good combo. They go in and cap and scout, and if they face any DD opposition, I help them out. But uh, the inability to get as close as you could in the past without tipping the enemy off, well, that has disappeared. And, uh, well, not the inability, the ability to get close. And that has disappeared, but cruisers, battleships, well, uh, you, you can still burn them just like, like in the past. And when DDs do get spotted by your friendly DDs, well, you can still rain down damage on them, significant damage. So very little changes here as well. Now, the rudder shift nerf, I mean... I chose this game as an example because, well, the map is ocean. There is no cover here. There is nowhere I can hide, there is nowhere I can take cover, there is no real places to avoid being shot at. And in a Kaba, especially me playing the Kaba, there's going to be plenty of people focus firing me. So this, ga this game will kind of be the test that if can you still play the Kaba and survive in it, even with multiple people focus firing you, multiple people shooting at you all these things, and uh, in my opinion, the Kaba is still very, very strong. And I actually quite like the nerf, well, first of all, the Kaba was straight up overpowered. One might make the argument that it still is overpowered. I haven't played enough in this patch to make a straight up comment like that, because, well, the DDs have a better chance of avoiding it now. But, and the battleships on the other hand, they get countered pretty hard, but I don't really mind battleships being countered that hard, because battleships are pretty ridiculous right now. It's good that there's at least one DD that is countering them hard, with with uh, pretty much everyone playing Hydra battleships these days. It's kind of absurd how easy it is for them to avoid torpedoes and such things. So, I don't really mind the fact that uh, this is a gunboat that counters uh, battleships hard because, well, that's the whole point of a destroyer in this game. The whole rock-paper-scissors approach. Anyway, uh, when it comes to DDs though benefiting, that's a great thing. DDs could use the... I'm, gl I'm actually really glad about that because uh, there's enough stuff that can ruin your day as a DD. 
Um, I mean, you can get random battleship volleys on you that deal your entire HP pool because they happen to get lucky with penetrations. Overall, there, there's just so much bullshit already in the game, all the radars and all this stuff. So the Kaba having less influence on enemy DDs is a welcome change because it also makes the Kaba less of a carry, or less of a playmaker, less of a carry ship because. Uh, of course, capping points is one of the most important things, and re reducing its ability to do such things is a good thing, because it already has so much influence on the game in sheer gunpower alone. Sneaking up on the rune, like things like these you can still do just easily. You sneak up fairly close, you don't want to get too close, because when you open up fire you don't want to give them an easy shot. Just sneaking up to 10 kilometers, turning around as you're firing, and kiting away uh, while you rain down fire on him and rain down damage on the guy. And dodging shells left, right and center. A DD gets spotted, he instantly becomes my priority target of course. Because, well, DDs are what wins games, uh, capping DDs especially. So, obviously I want to get rid of him as soon as possible. Oh man, is he really gonna get away? He's gonna get away. Fletcher is spotted though. Let's see if I can finish him off instead. Constantly harassing the DDs, but of course I also have to constantly avoid shells You might notice I'm constantly shifting my rudder left and right and left and right and trying to dodge and making sure they don't kill me off I tried to finish off the Fletcher, but I have to turn around now because I'm getting too close and these battleship pens are no joke As I said earlier battleship pens can really wreck your day. This guy just chunked me pretty hard I am of course running the heal cover especially now with the changes when the Kaba is even less of a destroyer. I mean, these changes have pushed it more towards the whole light cruiser role than it's ever been before. Uh, it already felt very much like light cruiser with the he with the heal and everything, but now with the concealment being reduced so much because you have to slot the rudder shift, well, now it's the quintessential light cruiser without the citadel. In in many ways, it actually does cruisering a lot better than many of the cruisers in the game right now which is pretty absurd because well many other cruisers can't really avoid shells actively the way you can in this ship i mean you can at extreme ranges zao for example is extremely strong because it can deal damage from such a long range that it's capable of uh, avoiding incoming shells but most other cruisers cannot do the same Whereas the Kaba, of course, is capable of doing this thanks to speed and maneuverability. Rune, giving broadside, trying to kill my Kutuzov, so I, I ambush him, switching to AP. And you can see the DPM the AP does. The Russian AP is no joke, it deals a ton of damage, and uh, the DPM is, of course, pretty damn nutty. As soon as he starts angling away, it's, yeah, it's time to switch to HE. Um, of course, I use priority target. Once again, this is something I don't use on any, really any other DD, I think. I think I might use it on German DDs, but I don't really value it on other DDs because, well, you want to be, whenever you're spotted in one of those, you're going to get shot at regardless, so you want to be dodging. But in the Kaba, you're pretty much spotted the entire time because spotting does, spot, the concealment doesn't have that much value for you. So uh, knowing when there's multiple people targeting you and knowing that you have to be actively avoiding, like now, is very useful. Because both the Yamato and the Friedrich de Grosse are shooting me. And I got chunked really hard as I ran into the dying Kutuzov that wasn't visible on the minimap. But I am able to get out of there. I popped my repair to get my engine running again. Uh, because, well, when your engine is broken, even with last stand, you have reduced speed and reduced acceleration. So I blew my repair to get my speed quickly back up, because a cover that's sitting still, a cover that's moving slow, is a very easy target. You want to be using your great speed, your great maneuverability at all times. The game is still quite... we're still behind on ships. But thanks to the pressure I've been able to exert on their DDs, including killing the Fletcher, we have managed to cap... A and B, and we have managed to hold them, because whenever one of the DDs try to go and cap it, my DDs spot them, and then I chime in with uh, the Kaba's great damage, and that has given us a pretty nice advantage. Using the concealment to my advantage, I wanted to disengage, well, I wanted to both close the distance, and uh, I want them to switch targets, especially the battleship. I want the battleships to target something else for a change. These torps are aimed at the ruin. Let's see, where is the Friedrich aiming? You see his turrets have turned away from me, so I start harassing the rune. Once again, turning hard left, I'm already, I'm basically already disengaging, and that's something you want to do, you want to kite. He is giving a lot of broadside, 
which I obviously take advantage of. They're sticking to the AP. Whenever you see cruisers give AP in the cover, just use AP. Um, this broadside, this broadside damage is very punishing. We're down another ship, not good, but I'm able to probably equalize it here. The battleship shot me, it seems, but the damage I took was quite minimal. Yamato is pushing into B, and like ships, like bat battleships in general, you're still able to deal with quite easily. I mean, sure, they can get some big pens on you, like he did there. Well, that wasn't actually pens, that was just over pens. They don't even need to get pens. Uh, because the overpen does so much damage, but you can st you still burn them down quite easily. Battleships are still not that big of a threat to you unless they get very lucky with the pens and as long as you keep your distance. If you get too close, you run the risk of uh, getting killed, of course, but you are still able to cook battleships quite comfortably in this ship. And uh, I actually like that. I like the change. Uh, the one class that really didn't need any more buffs, which is battleships, they don't benefit from this cover nerf at all, really. Uh, and the only one who really benefited was DDs. DDs benefited by far the, the most. Now that is of course if you run my recommended build, which is replacing the concealment module with the rudder shift module, which is something I highly, highly recommend, because um, the, the, new, the new nerfed rudder shift is so horrible. You, can, you can't play it, you can't fulfill your roles of actively dodging shells, you can't play the Kaba like it used to be played, and there's really no point attempting to play the Kaba with some sort of concealment build, because uh, you don't need the concealment, you're constantly shooting anyway. The few times I use concealment here, it's usually just to reposition or get a new angle on my target, but most of the time you want the maneuverability uh, in your favor. Minotaur, he really has no chance of hitting me at this range. At 12 km, I mean, if I was a cruiser, sure, he could do, do a lot of damage. If I was a battleship, sure, he could wreck me. But as a Kaba, he has no chance of landing his shells on me. All I need to do is change my course a bit, and because of how floaty his shells are, well, he's not gonna land anything on me. Shimakaze gets spotted by the enemy Shima, quickly switching target to him. Constantly switching, uh, constantly changing my course, of course, so the Minotaur doesn't get any easy shots on me. Looks like he changed target as well. Looks like he's even fleeing at this point. And this has been the story of the game. I've been able to support A and B the entire time and able to keep it from falling into enemy hands. And uh, this, is this has pretty much been the ultimate test for the new maneuverability. Are you able to stay alive in the Kaba after the nerf? And the answer is yes. The rudder shift, when you use the module, has gone down a small amount. It's not the end of the world. People have been, once again, overplaying the impact of this nerf far too much. It's really not that big of a deal. It's a welcome nerf, because let's face it, the Kaba was absurdly overpowered. It might still be a bit too strong, because let's face it, it's pretty much a better cruiser than many cruisers, which doesn't make that much sense. But then again, you still sometimes eat the random bullshit battleship pens, uh, so one could argue that maybe everything is just fine with the ship right now. I mean, I, I've had a game where an Isla hit me with four shells, and I ate 15,000 damage and in instantly died in my Kaba. So that's kind of the stuff that cruisers have to suffer through as well, the random citadels from weird angles kind of bullshit. So I guess cruisers and the Kaba are kind of in the same boat right now. They might get screwed by RNG at times, but overall... Uh, the ship feels good. The nerf was not the end of the world, as expected. Battleship giving AP, just like with cruisers, I use AP, I mean battleship giving broadside. Just like cruisers, of course, I use AP against him because, well, he just melts under uh, Stellinium. He, his HP pool is dropping so fast. When a battleship is already low, uh, there is no point wasting, wasting time trying to set fires on him because he can just repair them and heal up so much of it. If he's low HP, then you just use AP to burn him down quickly. Uh, whereas on the Yamato, who was full HP, on him I used HE because there was no point trying to use uh, AP to whittle him down because a full HP battleship takes so much damage. Uh, from uh, fires because you get all that percentage damage stacking up on top of each other It looks like the Shima is fleeing and so is the Minotaur I don't really understand why because well you don't save money by fleeing in fact you lose money by fleeing so uh, I don't really see the benefits here and there's no chance they will win the game this running away is a guaranteed loss 
So questionable decision making, sadly, I'm not going to be able to get my croc and because of this the score is ticking out. A 15 minute game, it didn't feel like a 15 minute game because I was constantly, constantly dodging shells, constantly doing my best to try and stay alive and uh, looking at the, the damage, 146k. Not really that much, but this w I wasn't really expecting massive damage on a map like Ocean, where just staying alive while being able to be a presence was going to be a challenge in itself. Uh, team score-wise, did top the scoreboard, sadly no Kraken, but uh, 2.5k base XP is always nice. In fact, looking at the detailed report, the interesting stat here is obviously potential damage. 2.9 million potential damage. That is more than most battleships get. Potential damage is of course shells fired, shells or torps fired your way. I didn't really have any torps fired my way, so that was just shells being shot my way by all the enemy battleships and cruisers and everything. And 2.9 million worth of damage tanked, I guess, evasive tanked by the Kaba. Uh, 48k spotting damage, which is of course always nice, but um, the potential damage is obviously the big deal here. So the survivability of the Kaba is still fantastic as long as you remember to keep evading, keep turning, keep changing your course and at keeping your speed up at all costs. So is the nerf really that big of a deal? Nah, not really, no. The one class that I really needed to help the DDs are the ones that benefit the most from this Kaba nerf. And that is, in my opinion, exactly how it should be. Anyway, let me move on to my recommended build for this uh, new-ish Kabarovsk. Right, starting off, we of course have the modules. Not much to talk about here. I far prefer the 10km torps because the 6km torps are so insanely situational. I mean, when are you ever going to be within 6km of any target unless you get some god tier lucky ambush off? So I don't recommend them at all. The 10km ones have much more utility. Consumable wise, uh, I would probably say go for priority heal, a premium heal as a priority number one, and then premium repair as priority number two. And if you can afford it, get the speed boost. Upgrade wise, um, main armaments mod 1, you don't want to be losing turrets or torps. Uh, aiming systems mod 1, better dispersion, faster torpedo turret, uh, traverse speed. None of the others are really that valuable for you. Your AA isn't good enough to justify the range and uh, your turret traverse you don't need. Faster reload because you are ultimately a gunboat, all, pretty much all your damage will come from your guns. So that's the ones you want to be upgrading. The engine boost mod 1, which I recommended you get from both ranked and from Clash of the Elements. Uh, you should have one of these extra to put on your Kaba. Increases your speed uh, speed duration from 2 minutes to 3 minutes. Faster rudder shift, aka steering gears mod 2. And this is of course the new change in the patch. Steering gears mod 3 instead of concealment. And this puts your rudder shift at 5.3 seconds, which is very comfortable and Perfectly playable as you just saw on Ocean. I had no issues. Well, it got close, but ultimately 2.9 potential, 2.9 million potential damage worth of evading on the Ocean map. Captain perks wise, I still recommend uh, the build that I've kind of well been testing, perfecting, whatever, ever since they gave the new Captain perks. Priority number one, I would actually say, well, if you're leveling a new. Uh, Russian DD, you probably want preventive maintenance as a low tier, but getting priority target at some point is highly valuable, especially in the Kaba. Well, it probably at the Tashkent slash Kiev, it starts becoming most useful because it's good to know how many people are actively focusing you. Last stand is absolutely priority after that, followed by the HP perk. You want to build towards uh, the healing type of build, which means the more max HP you have, the more your heal will actually heal you. So survivability expert followed by AFT for additional range. Additional range keeps you alive as it gives you more time to evade. Once you have this, I would follow it up with superintendent, additional speed boost, additional heal. And then there's some, here there's some difference in opinion. You can get adrenaline rush early, which is very useful or you can get uh, Demolition Expert early. I might get Demo Expert first, 
because early in the game when you haven't taken any damage like the first 10 minutes or so you might not take any damage if you're evading well and in those cases demolition expert will be more valuable than adrenaline rush ultimately though you want to get adrenaline rush uh, in the end because of course buffing your reload even further is a straight up damage increase for you which will benefit you greatly but that is my recommended Habarovsk build and uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it